So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our clients come to us looking to not just for one segment, because for us, you know, um, they all speak different language, all have a different culture, and are completely different, you know. So, you know, they look at sort of the, our expertise, our cultural, cultural insights to provide them with, you know, what, what area, DMA, with data, and what are the cultural ways for us to communicate to them. And also educate their team on the nuances, all the different, you know, culture that they would market to. So, for example, I think, you know, when we're talking on the panel, you know, the value, you know, is universal. But it's how you, the, in, the nuances of the cultural settings the value comes in is very, very different. You know, for example, and so that some of the things that we, we, we um, give them expertise is Vietnamese American, a lot of media and content is created in America by Vietnamese who have left uh, the communist country, okay? Chinese are immigrants that still have ties to the, the mainland. So if you were to use red collar, which is pretty well received in Chinese community, to Vietnamese, Vietnamese American that represent com communists, they, they'll have uproar. You know, uh, another incidence is, for example, Koreans and Chinese tend to use same Chinese characters, and um, you know, in from old days. And uh, number four is sounds exactly like death. So when you go to like Korea and and, uh, and China, there are no th uh, fourth fl floor similar to there are no 13th floor here. So, so yet there's certain numbers, you know, you want to avoid. You don't want your pricing to be 44, you know, dollars and 44 cents. You know, that's just negative. Nobody will do that. You know, so it's those kind of nuances. Lucky numbers they always like is eight and nine. So they always do like 88.88 .88 as a good pricing that, you know, that's more friendly. So 686 would be a good one to do. You know, a lot of casinos sometimes they do 686 special where it includes, you know, four nights entertainment, uh, entries to Baccarat tournament, and, you know, three days of golf. And for them, that's like, you know, very lucky. And here 666 means the devil. I exactly. You know, so those, you know, it's those differences, you know. That's a good question because, I mean, I think, you know, three things for us when we do is important. That's in language, in culture, and in depth, okay? So minimum, there's going to be two out of three that's going to be applied. So it could be even in depth to, are we talking to first gen, 1.5, or second gen? Because they're all very, very different, you know? For example, you know, I'm, what, I'm what, I, what, what they call sandwich generation. I have first gen family, and I have a second gen kid, and I'm 1.5, you know? So I may not read newspaper like my parents, but I also, you know, I'm very uh, Korean American in a way that I do, you know, watch a lot of movies, videos, go to grocery store. My daughter, on the other hand, you know, she's gonna be very, very Americanized, yet she's gonna have my influence on her. So depending on what product and uh, what we're selling, it, it, it really cater to different categories. and. If, let's say, we're doing more of a bank, it might be more upper. You know, maybe in language content might cater to more um, upper who rely on it, don't use it online. Or if it's like a, a, a money remittance, you may be talking to more recent immigrants. So they're very, very, um, who are, you know, who send money back. But after 10 years, that dies down because most of them have brought their family here. So you have to know those in-depth those nuances to really know what the clients are looking for, what are the best f uh, fit, what is a primary target, what is a secondary target. So this this culture, immigrant culture, went you know goes way back, right? And you know, like for example, like Vietnamese Americans, right? They don't, it, it didn't exist, and they're completely cut off from their, you know, mainland. So what do they do? They create their own culture. Whereas, like, a Korean American, you know, as so far as I remember in, in 80s, you know, my parents would go to the video store who, who, who would rent out recorded Korean TV. And that's what we would watch because it didn't exist, right? 
So obviously that culture has changed now, and there's you know there's like a, a Direct TV who offer Korean uh, television programming, and you talk about Drama and Fever. Now it's available online, you know, and within after you know airing 30 minutes later, you get to have it online. So having access to those, you know, allows us to you know be familiarized with what we're used to, keep our culture. Because some of the culture, for example, like Filipino and in South Asian, they tend to uh, acculturate faster. A Japanese culture is another one because they want to embrace. But you know, a lot of different Asians like us uh, want to keep that culture. And one of the best ways to keep that culture is in-country programming. That's why Drama Fever, On Demand Korea, uh, a lot of the NBC, KBS, uh, SB, uh, uh, SBS, those kind of programming we can get access to is key. That's how we catch up. And, you know, I always have to remind a lot of people in this business that Asian Americans may be only 17 million in the U.S., but we're world's general market. We're 3 billion people, you know. So with technology, digital, and Internet, the world's becoming only smaller and smaller and tighter. So it's, it no longer apl applies that I, we have to watch the content here. We have such readily accessible content in country. And, and, and sometimes a lot of the in country fad trends do affect here. And, mm -hmm. and you can see that. I think that's a challenge um, that, that you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to kind of break them out. So that I have this image that I always show and a picture of the globe, global kind of in a flat picture. And it has a small circle around China, India, and all the Asia. And it says there are more people in, inside of this circle than outside. You know, and it points out, like, if, if you can market, has a product that you can reach first Asian Americans here, Imagine the word of, you know, things got travel goes to the in-country for China, for example. I mean, you know, having a movie, blockbuster movie here, 50 million in the first day is a big deal. But in China, that's nothing. I mean, you got billion of people. You know, one day of their version of Black Friday on Alibaba, one day outsells a whole Black Friday in the U.S., Yeah, exactly. I mean, so that, that's kind of the global scale that I think people just quite, and, and unfortunately, U.S. market and global market is separated. But I feel like, why, why aren't you using them both? Why aren't you, you know, having more, better syndication? Because that's what's happening. For example, there was a huge Korean drama hit in China. In that drama, the couple eats bowl of noodles. That spiked Korean uh, a noodle brand to sales increase about 200%. Okay, and that impact came to US. And similar within six months, also that same Korean brand noodles sales increased. So you're having a universal effect, you know. So why not also go the other way and, and leverage that? I think. Probably one, one aspect is probably the habits. You know, some, sometimes people do what they're best comfortable with, what they know. And they don't feel comfortable to break out of that zone. And, and maybe perhaps that they haven't traveled enough. They don't see. Uh, you know, I work in a multiculture where, you know, we have 10 different ethnicity in our office. And all the food is so diverse. You know, when we have a you know, potluck day, it becomes an international food fest. When you see that, and, 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 and it's not just, I think it's, it's a marketing, it's how you open yourself. Uh, you look at like Food Network with Anthony Bourdain opening up more areas, food is becoming more fusion. I think it, it's that mindset. For example, a lot of people are used to one food in a certain way, but if, once you open up a palate, there's world of amazing food. Just like that, I think the marketing... Once you open up the possibilities and look at the numbers, you know, it's not just elephant, you know, shooting. It's about farming. You know, if, if these are growing uh, ethnicity markets that you can really embrace, be part of the community, that grow together, 
I mean, that's, that's a farming. You know, I think it's an organic way of doing it. I think it just takes time uh, for people to be more aware of it. And that's kind of why you know, we participate in this program, because our goal is to increase awareness, empowerment, and education. I guess it teaches what not to do. You know, a good example, uh, uh, not regarding marketing, but Memoir of Geisha, right, that movie. And that movie had famous Chinese actresses that were well-known. So, you know, a lot of Asians watch all different kind of movie. When you go watch that and you're, you know they're Chinese, they're playing Japanese roles, and it's just like, what are you doing? You know, it doesn't, you know, so that's a bad example of what not to do. And there, right now there's a huge backlash. You know, you see with Aloha, now with the Ghost in the Shell. So they're starting to realize, oh, okay, we, 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 we think we can fit it, but realize there's really nuances that we're going to have to pay attention. Because if they were to start it properly, you know, the, just again, I was, what I was saying is, imagine if it's a big hit here and it, it, it resonates with the two billion customers, I mean, you have a huge success. I think the biggest mistake, and I kind of mentioned this on the panel, is marketing goes from general market, they push what they want to multiculture. Right? Saying, oh, we have this messaging, we're going to sell, and this is our messaging, and translate this, transcreate this to you know, uh, Hispanic, African American, and Asian. But when you look at American culture, it's completely opposite. Music, fashion, food, entertainment, all that is influenced by multiculture. I mean, music is a prime example. Uh, a lot of the movies being remade that are a big hit from Asia you know, uh, is another example. Fashion, uh, is another one, and a lot of entertainment. So why are we, when American culture is being influenced by a uh, multicultural you know, culture, why are we doing marketing the other way?